to help answer anything or say anything that will help your audience. Obviously, I I'm in the process of growing mine. You know, my ultimate goal is to uh, connect with people and help them grow their small businesses. I love the idea of mm -hmm. people starting something, making something for themselves. Yeah, yeah. So I always think it's cool to meet people of all different, you know, races, religions, ethnicities, everywhere from around the world, and like talk about business and how we can help each other. So yeah, I'm always down. <laughs> so awesome. I I'm recording from a few minutes ago. Okay. Um, okay. So maybe again, just give us a quick intro about like yourself and the company. Um, and then we can go with the, I guess, with the random questions. And then, of course, at the end, feel free to ask us any questions as well. But I think we sure. should first open, uh, like officially, at least a little bit for our audience. <laughs> Welcome to the second episode of the Dulu Show. We have a very special guest from the States and the very first guest, which is not a friend or a relative as well. <laughs> this is uh, John, Johnny uh, from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Johnny... Uh, can you please share something about who you are, uh, what you're doing? Yes, I'm a crazy dude from the middle <laughs> of America. So I am uh, randomly found you guys on Instagram. Um, Julian kind of reached out and said, hey, we're filming some stuff. And I said, of course I'll join you for that. I don't know you from anybody else, but of course I'll join you. So um, I'm a wedding videographer and uh, you know we've grown a business from about – Five six hundred dollars of revenue to several million dollars in revenue now over the, the past ten years. We've got a team of about eleven, uh, twelve people now that shoot and edit and work for us. We've got sales team, we've got marketing team, and it's kind of gone from this thing that was a extra bedroom kind of business, you know, a business out of my apartment, extra bedroom to you know five thousand square feet office space with people getting trained and interns and really just turning it into something that we're trying to take into a nationwide brand. So that's the basics. Um, business guy at heart, always loved business, always loved selling things, um, always ripping off my younger brothers by selling them something for more than it actually costs, things like that. So I'm always, uh, I don't rip people off anymore, but uh, you know, I've been documenting my journey as I'm growing in my relationships with my business and in my fitness. And that's how I think we kind of connected um, documenting journey so um, everybody can find me just at Johnny Bun um, there's an underscore at the end on Instagram we Johnny Bun your hand on the screen. <laughs> okay yeah so um, everybody can find me there but yeah um, Johnny Bun is my name the website it's all there um, loving for anybody to join and doc or in while I'm documenting my journey Perfect. too as far as we know we have some uh, viewers so. and followers in the states so they might reach out to you you never know and they're at that age right. who might be marrying in a year or two, so. <laughs> yeah, and we're, we're pretty full. I mean, we've got a waiting list about a year long, oh, so okay. um, we're in a good spot with that company, and that's where I'm now finally able to get to what I love the most, is which is growing the business, copying it and pasting it into other markets, and then um, really just taking it. And it's, it's we're like 99% up the mountain, and we're about to tip over and just have a, a redeemed productions as my company in every city in America. So it's coming, and we're pumped about it nice. so. that sounds amazing are you currently in the office or at home i'm currently in my office um okay, i can great. try to this is just my personal office but i'm just kind of <laughs> like just in here got a little uh just a taylor swift calendar That's do you guys nice. know taylor swift yeah, yeah we do <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. all right so enough of that but anyway um yeah i've got another eight or so offices out the door here but um just have a little space here try to keep it simple and uh, quiet, so I can get stuff done. That's amazing. So when when about this, year, just... this here is my state, Oklahoma, right here. That's what Oklahoma looks like for all you people. Uh, and we live like right there. What so. is it made out of? It looks like a piece of string. It's a, it's a piece of wood, and someone made it for me. Custom made it uh, with one piece of yarn, and they've, okay. there's nails all the way, nails all the way around it, and it's just one piece of yarn that's been wrapped okay. a thousand times to form the state. So it's pretty cool. Nice Does Oklahoma have access to sea? No. Does it have access to the sea? No, okay. it, it's right in the middle of America. Right, yeah, we, We've got a good eight-hour drive to okay. see any more waves, right. unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I have a question. When, when about did you start documenting? Like at what stage of the business did you start documenting it? So this year is when I really started uh, turning the camera this way because I'm, I mean, I have, I think, 30 cameras that I own. Uh, I've always pointed them at people instead of at myself. So um, I realized this year that 
I was just getting tons of messages, people saying, hey, how do you charge so much for these weddings? And how are you getting these crazy, ridiculous, you know, celebrity weddings and doing, you know, all over the country? What are you doing? And I'd picked up a lot from uh, Gary Vee, Gary Vaynerchuk, and uh, about social media and just doing it the right way over time and building relationships. And so people kept asking, and I was like, I'm just going to put things out there. You know, it's like people like, how do you advertise on Facebook? It's like, I'd answer that question 10 times a week. So I was like, I'm just going to make a video of how I do it. And I'm going to document that. And then it was like, huh, we're about to go into new cities. I really wish I would have had video footage of myself whenever we were starting the company. I would love to be able to look back and I just can't. So um, I wanted to be able to look back. It's kind of selfish, but I just wanted to be able to look back. I did, well, I'm not trying to necessarily make money doing it. I'm sure that it, that's just my nature. I'll end up making money somehow, but uh, it's more just for me and for my kids to see what I did to help change our family tree. So That's pretty neat. And one th why did you decide to, to start documenting this year particularly? Is that related to your, your business goals or is it just something that um, as you said, you heard Gary speaking about it and you decided to try it, or is it their business? Is it tied to a business goal, basically? So, I have, we just started getting lots and lots of interns. We're trying to grow our business from Tulsa into Dallas, which is like a three and a half hour drive from where we live. It's a bigger, much bigger market, and we're growing into these other cities. So, we started hiring and bringing on interns, and I was saying the same things again and again. Um, so, I wanted to start documenting how I did what I did. Um, for them so I didn't have to continually teach them one at a time but then just looking at like my life in general there were so many people um, that were wanting to know what I was doing and how I was doing it that I thought well if I just bring somebody to film me at a wedding or someone to film me as I'm traveling I'm going to show them what I'm doing I'm noticing a lot of people that are like wow you're so lucky you you know your company's making millions of dollars you're lucky you know you got you know, lucky on that. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I've been working like 18 hour days for a decade. That's not luck. So I was just, it's mainly um, to show people what it really takes to, to do this and then to maybe rub it in a couple people's faces that <laughs> I'm working harder than them. <laughs> so Do you have a just, a little, just a little bit of that. I don't know. It's like 1% of that. Yeah. Do you have so. a set frequency that you're doing or just as when you feel like something's worth documenting, you do it? So I... I've, every day I'm recording like my fitness journey, um, which I'll talk about here in a second. And then um, I usually I have a guy that works for me that comes and films behind the scenes things for me um, once or twice a week if I'm going to be doing something worth filming. So instead of you know the Gary Vee approach, just having somebody follow me 24 hours a day, seven days a week, um, Chris, my guy, you know, I'll be like, hey, I'm filming these two cool weddings coming up this weekend. Come follow me as I do this. And so my main focus right now is to show other wedding videographers kind of what I'm doing, um, how I treat the clients during the day, and then um, hopefully branching out to like that building a platform for me to help influence, you know, other businesses and stuff because it translates to every business, you know? So it's like, I mean, if you're, if you're willing to work harder than most people, you're going to beat them most of the time. So um, on the fitness side of things, I, I do film myself every single day. Um, I've been a CrossFitter for nine years and we've been in great shape. And over the last couple of years, I had some injuries and gained like 40 pounds. I wasn't fat, but I was just starting to get really poofy. And uh, I decided, hey, I got to draw a line in the sand. And so I did. And, and in January, I uh, weighed like 215 uh, pounds, which I don't, again, you guys don't do pounds, right? Yeah, no I pounds? think it's, that, yeah, it's about half. Uh, quite, quite the word, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I, w I was getting poofy. Anyway, so since January, I've dropped about 25 pounds. So I've um, been filming myself every day and kind of putting out just a weekly fitness, um, you know, blog kind of. So I didn't start showing episodes of that until about eight or nine weeks into working out. So I did, I'm not a fan of like just showing people day one. I want, you know, especially on fitness or something where it's like I'm building towards something I'd Nobody cares about day one. They care about like day 90 or day 120. So I'm like in my sixth month now of eating clean, uh, exercising, and just slowly um, down in the 180 pound range from the 210. So it's like getting closer to 30 pounds of, of lost weight. So again, I think that correlates a ton to like your business. And if you're not able to get your fitness in place, you're not able to get your 
you know, your work life in place. So it just all correlates. So I wanted to show people, hey, I'm getting up at 4.50 in the morning to go work out, and then I work for 12 hours, then I work, you know, then and just to show people, hey, here's actually what it takes to do what I'm doing. So. Yeah, that sounds amazing. You have two early risers here as well. At the same time, <laughs> I'm quite jealous of the 24/7 uh, gyms that you guys have because uh, in Amsterdam the earliest they open is seven, so I'm kind of late to work when I go to the gym, so I have to wait until seven and yeah. then go to the gym. But yeah, that's a bummer. Maybe. Yeah. That sounds like a good business idea for somebody out there. <laughs> I, th I think in Bulgaria there are more 24/7 gyms than in the Netherlands yeah. actually. Do you guys have CrossFit, or do you know of what CrossFit is? Okay. Yeah, yeah, we do. There I think are it's becoming. I think it's becoming as well yeah. something that's kind of picking up speed here as well. Cool. Yeah, just kind of full body workouts every day and tricking your muscles and yeah. flipping tires and doing pull ups and <laughs> all kinds of random stuff. So. Are you doing pro CrossFit at the moment, or you switch to a different? Uh, yeah. Training routine. Yeah, I go. I work out five times a week at the CrossFit gym at five thirty in the morning. So. And are those gyms that are specially certified for CrossFit, or is it just a normal gym that you go to and you have all these other things that you do? No, it's this one's a special, like, it's just called Next Generation CrossFit. It's a CrossFit gym that is affiliated and pays an affiliation fee to be a part of CrossFit. Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. because CrossFit is a brand, actually. Yeah. It's not... Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they have a, the CrossFit Games here in America, and people come from all over the world for those. But like, they crown like the fittest person on earth, and so uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So it's it's become its own sport, really. It's like the sport of fitness. Wow! So, oh, well, that sounds amazing. Should try something. I think we don't want to keep you too much of your time, so I think it's time for our random question. Um, thought hard about that. The question is: How do you make important decisions? How do you take those important decisions? How do I make important decisions? Yes. For the most part, I ask my wife. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, over the years, I have made lots of wrong decisions. Um, you know, the, I've got some scars on my back from the uh, quick decisions that I've made. Um, if there's an important decision, it's usually something that I don't have to make within 10 minutes. I usually have time to think about it for a few days. And my natural... Uh, you know, thing that I do is just like make a decision, let's go. You know, I'm the guy that just wants to go. Um, but I have a, a team of people around me that I, I kind of lay out, you know, hey, we got this decision to make. Do we want to open up new offices? Do we want to? And I'll just lay out the idea and kind of get feedback from everybody, sleep on it for a while, and then usually I'll, I'll have a pretty clear answer of what my decision is. Um, I think that we feel forced into making decisions most of the time, but 99% of our decisions, to me, it seems like you can just take a deep breath. Wait for a second, sleep, you know, get a good night's sleep, figure it out, um, and then talk to the people that are close to you that understand your business or understand whatever decision you have to make. And so I just have a, a good group of guys around me. I've got my wife. I've got people that that I trust that, you know, we've had some really important decisions to make recently, and that's exactly what I did. I just went to all of them and said, here's the scenario. What do you guys think? Um, and every one of them have their own feedback, and then I can take that and use some intuition to say, this is the right decision for me. And that's saved me a ton. So, Do you also follow kind of the, the speed over perfection approach? Because that's something that helped us a lot during the, the whole process. Say it again, I'm sorry? Do you follow the, the, the philosophy of kind of doing things faster than rather than doing them perfect? Yes, 100%. Um, nobody really cares to watch a vlog of, you know, when I went to Montana three months ago um, or went to another, you know, state. They want to see it now. And I think that the more real that you can come across, especially since we're doing like video blogs and things like that. Um, you know, this morning I was on the way to work and was, you know, I, um, w I have a little mount in my car to have my phone. A lot of my videos are just on my phone. Um, and I just recorded a little one minute thing just about like, uh, taking steps instead of like a lot of people get paralyzed by like, Oh, I don't know what decision to make. I don't, I'm not, and then they just, they sit there forever and they don't make a decision. They don't get going. And I was just trying to encourage people, Take steps, get going. If you've taken step one, take step two, and, and sooner or later you've gone a mile or you've gone ten miles. And so, um, speed over perfection every day. But I do think that there's like equally pulling. Uh, you know, you can't just throw crap out there. You've got to like, mm -hmm. you know, there's the balance between the two. But yeah, speed um, for sure. You know, I want to be the first one out there talking about you know a Snapchat filter or a um, you know last year Snapchat was really big in the states and it was like we were. At the, one of the first ones at weddings, putting 
Snapchat filters at weddings, so you're at a wedding and you use it, and it's like, oh my goodness, Redeem Productions has a Snapchat filter in it. We like to be fast, you know, we like to be the one there early, um, and we've made lots of money by being the first one, the fastest one, even though it wasn't like perfect. And in my industry with wedding videos, they're crazy now, and especially in the states. Like, I mean, there's so many toys that you can have for your cameras um, to make you know, drones and all this stuff, you know, that, that's out there, and. There's so many people that are better than me at shooting and editing weddings, but they spend months making the video absolutely perfect instead mm -hmm. of making it awesome. So I go back and forth. You know, I I do things in a way that I feel like is excellent, but there's like you know perfect, and then there's perfect plus, and I don't try to do perfect plus. <laughs> so. And do you go to when you shoot when you film a wedding? Do you go with the whole team, or you have a you have a small group of people that go there? Um, we have video and photo options for people. So, like, there's usually two video, two photo, and an assistant. So, there's usually five of us. And so, if I'm traveling somewhere, like this weekend, uh, we're here in Oklahoma. Next weekend, we're in California. I'm going by myself. The next weekend, we're back in California, and I'm going with three others. It just depends on what they're they're doing. You know, we've gotten to go all over the place, and the most we've ever traveled with, I think, is five people. So. Is it seasonal? Uh, like your business, is it kind of seasonal? Um, it was. It is in Oklahoma because in Oklahoma, uh, winter gets really cold, you know, and so lots of freezing ice. Kind of nobody wants to get married outside. <laughs> we started doing uh, marketing in Southern California, you know, Los Angeles, uh, those kinds of areas where it's warm all year round. It's in this, you know, seventy degrees Fahrenheit, just perfect weather all year round. So we started doing marketing there and. Uh, a lot of our weddings in the winter time, it's you know where it's really cold here in Oklahoma. We're booking lots of weddings out on the West Coast, and so you know you get all these beautiful weddings with beautiful weather in in the cold months in Oklahoma. So I can get out of this cold weather and go spend some yeah. tropical palm trees and beaches kind of weather. So um, it, it really depends. You know, some people uh, it used to be seasonal, but now people are getting married every weekend, and and so it's. It's really not, it's never like really slow, except for maybe January, February, people are just like, ah, it's too, too cold, so. Where can people find more about uh, your company and your services? Yep, so the new thing that I'm doing, you know, for Johnny Bunn, which is me, my personal brand that I'm working on and documenting, johnnybunn.com on Facebook, it's facebook.com slash blog, um, and then Instagram is under, or, at Johnny Bun with an underscore at the end. Uh, so I'm still trying to message the guy that ha owns Johnny Bun that hasn't posted in like two years. Uh, he's not responding. So for there on Instagram, you know, the fastest place that I'm posting things are Facebook and Instagram right now. So those are great places for that. And then my wedding video company is called Redeemed Productions. And so Instagram is at Redeemed Productions. And then our website's redeemedproductions.com. So perfect. Well, I think... Yeah, I'm sure we can talk a, a lot talk more about a lot business, longer. but yeah, we can <laughs> maybe do a second round. If you have any questions for us as well, we're up for answering absolutely everything. Yeah, um, let me think here what questions I have for you guys. So you guys have been documenting for how long now? About two and a half months, maybe? Something like that. Yeah. Okay, cool. And um, how are you guys producing your videos right now? Like, or is it on your phones, or is it... Yeah, it's the it's basically the phones. It's the phone. Uh, yep. And then we we kind of learn to edit both of us. So if if we if, if we're both a different places, someone can shoot something and edit it and post it. Um, yep. So it was. And uh, is the company just you two right now? Yeah. Yeah. And are you guys doing other jobs besides this one right now? Yeah, yep. full time as well. We're both programmers, so we work at different companies, but that's our day job. Um, so yep. we're coding during the day, and then. Evenings, mornings, and then the weekend is fully kind of committed Love to, it. to running. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Really and coding has been actually very helpful in us learning to uh, edit uh, and to film as well because we pretty much learned on our own. Um, and we, we knew that uh, you, you can just use YouTube or something else, find a tutorial. The software is super accessible to, to use it. And yep. it takes you about one weekend to get the hangs of uh, Premiere. Yeah. Uh, or even iMovie, which is free on the Mac, so 
there, there's uh-huh. really like it, it, there's hundred percent truth in the saying that there's a, like tools are not a limitation anymore. Yeah, and the thing is, like even you know to, to your point there, you know, you guys just started and taking steps and figuring it out, and I think so many people are just paralyzed in their business that they're like, well, I want to start a shoe company or I want to do whatever, and it's like, but I don't really know what to do besides get a name for my shoe company and a website. And yeah. It's like, okay, that's step one. Do that. It's like, oh, now I need some prototypes. Okay, let's Google. I mean, Google exists. Yeah, it, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a beautiful thing. It's you know? amazing. It's so, amazing, really. It, it's just crazy what's available. You know, It's like if you want to learn to do anything, you can do anything. And so there's just, I think there's just two kinds of people. They're the ones that like have the ideas, and then there's the ones that execute the ideas. Yeah. yeah. And so... It's cool to see other people just get out there and hustling. I'm excited to see where your company goes. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And we're gonna definitely follow your company and your journey. Uh, I'm already a fan of you. I'm actually a little bit want to come and work for you. <laughs> yeah, come on, man. <laughs> uh, um, but uh, yeah, chose a different path uh, a few months ago. Um, yeah. but I'm, I'm sure our path will cross uh, at some point, probably. Yeah, yeah, I think company coach is well something that I want to talk about with you, but then maybe let's do it for some other time because it's really interesting just yeah. how one person lays out the foundation for a company coach and then in the early stage. It's just really yeah, fascinating. I'm, I'm a huge fan of chatting with people about all that kind of stuff. So you just let me know and I'd love to chat. Thanks. Cool. All right. Cool. Thank you very much, John. Thanks for your time and good luck with the CrossFit. Videos, Redeem tor- productions. tornadoes, <laughs> all that stuff. Tornado. Yes, all of those things. We will we'll stay safe. So yeah, keep in touch and yeah, talk next time. Awesome. See you Sounds good, guys. Day, man. All right, you do the same. Have a good one. Bye.